All right, hey everybody, it's Dr. Spear here. Um, I just wanted to talk to you briefly about one of the phyla uh, that I want you to know for Zoology Lab, and that's the Anelida. And these are the segmented worms. You've seen a segmented worm before. They're in phyla Anelida. What can I tell you? If we look on our um, phylogeny, you can see uh, sort of where these are related to the other organisms. And this includes earthworms, which you're familiar with, but you also have leeches, freshwater worms, and marine worms. And so here's a couple pictures from your book showing some leeches. And the one on the left is, uh, I guess, the largest leech ever found. The one on the right is one that's a uh, sucking blood from a human and they've got uh, uh, little raspers that can get through the skin and they release an anticoagulant um, which stops the blood from clotting which allows that blood to flow um, and uh, we've seen an earthworm before on the right the two effects these are um, aquatic worms and they what they're showing here is their unique behavior and where they stick their head down into those tubes and their tails wag up in the water currents and these are the marine segmented worms and I guess one of the things that you can use to easily identify this group is you can clearly see they're made up of many segments and they're worm-like um, and that's pretty easy to predict what phylum they should be in. Uh, if we look at a cross-section of an earthworm you can see different structures here but what I'm trying to point out is that you have both longitudinal muscle that runs the length of the worm and circular muscle that goes around the worm and this gives the worm, uh, we've shown this before, how the earthworm moves. And we talked when we talked about the hydrostatic skeleton, those circular muscles contract and make the diameter of each segment smaller. But because it's filled with fluid, um, the volume has to remain the same, and so this causes the segment to elongate. And so by contracting the circular muscles, you make each segment elongate, which stretches out that anterior portion of the worm. And on these segments, they have little hair-like structures called setae, and those grab into the ground. And so then when the circular muscles relax, that segment's going to retain its original shape, and so it's going to shorten back up, but because it's grabbing hold of the ground, that segment's not going to move, but the segments behind it will move. And so as those segments shorten back up, they pull the rest of the worm. And by coordinating this movement along the length of the worm, that's how they can move. And this just shows you a seta, uh, the muscles that can be used to uh, retract it, so they're not always sticking out. So Obviously, when you want the segment to slide forward, you don't want the you want to pull these in, and when you need the segment to not move, you stick them out. Now, that movement is accomplished by just using the circular muscle and the hydrostatic skeleton. You've got those long longitudinal muscles, the length of the worm; those are used to make it turn left and right. So if you contract muscles on one side, it shorten up that side, it's going to turn toward the contracted muscle. And if you've never seen a worm uh, move before, you can kind of see the elongation of the segments and the setae grab in, and the segments return to their original size and you pull the rest of the worm with you. So you stretch out, you grab hold, 
and then you pull the rest of your body. It's very relaxing. <laughs>